Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Pastor Lisa Arledge. Will you pray with me, please? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Lord, we ask that you be with us now as we examine your word, and we ask that you help us, because it doesn't sound like good news to us, and, and we know it is. So help us as we dive in and find out what you have for us to understand today from your word. Be with me as I proclaim your word in the name of Jesus. Amen. So I'm glad to be here. And I wanted to let you know that Oasis is alive and well. And we're in the process of, of purchasing a new space for our ministry, which is on Krauss Avenue in Akron. We're not sure whether it's going to happen or not, but we sure hope so. So I'm, I'm letting everyone know. It's a former Byzantine Catholic church that has a house that, that has six bedrooms in it. And it also has a sanctuary. And it also has a huge gymnasium where we can put up six different basketball hoops and have lots of kids gather. And this uh, opportunity is, is, is before us, and if you wouldn't mind, keep it in your prayers. We could sure use a space of our own to be able to reach out to even more kids. So right now we have about 100 who are active. We see a small portion of that 100 maybe six times a year, and the rest of them we see at least twice a week. And even sometimes on the, the open gym night, which is Thursday, or which is Monday, uh, we see even more. So we see a lot of kids, and they're all making progress. And they weren't, they aren't here with me today, not because they didn't want to come, but because too many of, one, of them wanted to come. And they, they now they like to tell their story, and then I don't get to talk enough. So the ones who were here last year, I'd like to let you, I'd like to fill you in on how they're doing. First of all, Sandell is has a job right now, he details cars, and he works every Thursday night on getting his GED. He had dropped out of high school, and he's 19, and he's now working with one of our uh, Oasis mentors and moving forward on his GED. And Donald is a senior at Garfield High School, and Donald is doing well, and he'd love to go to the Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh Institute of Technology because He'd like to go and live there, but it costs $60,000, so we're working on trying to find a way for him to move forward in his college without uh, moving to Pittsburgh, but they like to get out of Akron. They think that means that they've made it, so we're working with him. Also, let you know Noah is at Mercyhurst College in Erie, Pennsylvania, with the help of Oasis and some donations. He was able to go to this uh, junior college, and he's playing soccer, and he currently has all A's. And Larry is, has a job right now where he's in training at the Salvation Army so that he uh, can continue to live on his own. He moved out of his house with his grandma. And his brother Stephen is a senior at Ellett High School. And that kid just never stops talking. And um, he's doing great. And he's, he's been out of trouble. And he's not had any in school or out of school suspensions this year. And he's on the merit roll. So all of the young men who were here last year are doing great. And I have 100 uh, kids that have sadder stories than that, but those are our, our success stories that I wanted to fill you in on. I also wanted to let you know that OASIS stands for O, open, A, accepting, S, safe, place, to I, instruct in the ways of Jesus, as we all S, surrender to Christ, and form a community grabbed by grace. And the kids know that's what we are, and we really work on being an open and accepting place. I also want to let you know, as we move forward to this new location, a lot of people that are members of other church come and participate on Wednesdays and now Sunday nights, and they're a part of our community, but they're members of their own church. And so what we've decided is that as we move forward to this new location, we're going to follow two things. Number one, we're going to follow Christ, and number two, we're going to align ourselves with the poor. So whoever comes with us finds someone poorer than themselves to align themselves with, which means that all of our kids who go to this new location and who are part of the ministry will find someone poorer than them to align themselves with. And we're hoping to eventually be able to perhaps uh, reach out to the homeless community that's in this area of Kraus, which is in a, a very difficult start, spot in Akron, there are a lot of really severe homeless guys who live kind of under the canal there. So we're hoping as, as a part of our outreach with our kids to align themselves with the poor that we'll be doing that in outreach from there. So we're really excited about all that. I say all of that just as an introduction because I do want to get 
to the gospel message today, which is Jesus talking, which is, which is very important for us to listen to every single thing he says. And today I'd like to pull out two things of what he said because they're really important. The first one that he says in verse 9 is, do not be terrified. Let's say that out loud. Do, do not be terrified. terrified. Now here's the thing. Because the world is a complicated place. Not only that, but there's a lot of horrible things going on throughout the whole world, in the neighborhood, in our families, in our schools, everything. And, and Jesus says, do not be terrified. I think it's really important for us to heed that. Because the point is that when, when we live in relationship with Christ, Christ's got our back. Okay? And he grabs us by grace. God, through Jesus Christ, grabs us by grace, and sometimes it's by the back of our necks, right? And rescues us and cares for us and loves us. The next thing that Jesus said, and, and, and he said a lot in today, he said, make up your mind, in verse 14, not to testify in advance, for I will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. It's really important that we come to worship, that we are fed by, by the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and that we're, we're in the word and that we are in prayer, and then we're, we're different because of that. And so we take that love of God with us wherever we go, and because we are fed that way, when we do speak up in the midst of trouble, in the midst of conflict, or just in the midst of joyful times, we can know that Jesus and God are going to give us the words to speak. And it's really important, especially if you feel like you don't have a voice, which a lot of the kids at Oasis don't have a voice, and I didn't used to have one, and, and maybe you're still working on speaking up too, so it's important to, to heed those words of Jesus. <coughs> I want to let you know that there are some other kids that are part of the, of the Oasis that are in deep, dark trouble right now, and I'd like to let you know that we have two young men, Damon and Tyler, who are part of a, a nine-month gap year program that's sponsored by the Northwestern Ohio Senate called Alt Year, and Damon and Tyler are now living in Toledo for nine months, and they're part of a group of eight. And they're having a little trouble adjusting because the other people that are part of the group have had an academic background and they've had some privilege and Damon just can't understand why people don't just wash the dishes with a rag instead of putting them in the dishwasher where you have to then take them out. So the point is that he's just really kind of, that Damon and Tyler are having trouble adjusting. So if you wouldn't mind if we could just pause for a moment and pray for Damon and Tyler. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we lift up to you Damon and Tyler who are this day in Toledo and have left their home situations which aren't good, but they've entered into a new environment which is so unfamiliar. We ask that you would continue to give them the strength and the wisdom to discern how to speak up and, and how to speak their truth into the situation. We ask that you be with the leaders, that you would open them up to the gifts that Damon and Tyler bring. In the name of Jesus, amen. I also want to let you know that there are some kids who are really struggling. There's a young lady named Ashley who's been bounced from foster home to foster home. Her mom died about five years ago, and she's trying to um, move forward in her life, but the people and the places that she lives and the circumstances that she has, she just continues to make bad choices. She's, she's uh, making bad choices with, with, a, with a boyfriend, and she's making bad choices with um, her drinking. And so I ask that you would consider to keep Ashley in your prayers because right now she just got a, a job at McDonald's. And the funny thing was we took her to the, to the job interview and I sat her down for a cup of coffee and I said, we don't have a grown up cup of coffee here. And she actually spilled the coffee in, all over her shirt, her new white shirt, about 10 minutes before the interview. And I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh my gosh. And so we took the shirt off and we washed it and we put soap on it in the bathroom at the coffee shop and we went in my car and we blew it dry in the dryer and she went into the interview and she got the job. And I said to her, I said, no, you just need to think about everything in life is just like that spilled coffee on you. That you, you think, oh my gosh, I'm never going to be able to go in for the interview. But here's the thing, the coffee does spill on you, but that always, you can always push through with the help of God and with the help of others. And so now everything in her life she, she equates with a spilled cup of coffee on her new white blouse. So I wanted to share that with you and prayers, prayers for Ashley. There's just, literally just, just all of the kids are in, in need of your prayers. So I told, I told this story before and I want to share it again because there's this, 
moment uh, that I've had in my own personal life where I understand something new now. So here's how the story goes. Rebecca, um, she is the one who really has had a lot of trouble homeless for six years of her life. Her mom moved from house to house with bad boyfriends who were all involved with drugs. And she started to come to the ministry. She cusses like a sailor. I always have to pick her up last after I've dropped everybody else off because I never know what she's going to say. I have to bring a, a sweatsuit and sweatpants because I don't know what she's going to wear. And we just kept meet, meeting Rebecca where she was. We started to gain trust. It's Sunday morning on Easter, and she is sitting down to eat the Easter brunch that's provided at St. John St. Paul, and someone spills a cup of coffee. And I say, hey, Rebecca, can you help me clean this up? In front of the man who thinks that the kids never do anything to help. She says, no. Ah. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. I said, Rebecca, you're kidding me, right? Like, go, go, just go. No, she's not going to do it. I said, well, fine. In my anger, I said, I'm going to take you home. And I did. I took her home, and I sat on the front porch of that horrible house where those drug dealers and awful men were sleeping inside, and I knew it was wrong. But we sat there on that porch in silence for about 10 minutes. And I said to her, Rebecca, don't I always have your back? Why can't you just have my back? Nothing. No answer. Another three or four minutes, and, and I asked her again, and she says, Lisa, I was eating, I was hungry. <clears throat> So I said, all right, let's go back. And we did. And it took another few years for Rebecca to gain trust, but Rebecca attends church every week, and she just recently graduated from the University of Akron's Police Academy, and she has two jobs. So God really knows what God is doing. We don't. But here's the thing I realized recently. God never says to us, hey, Lisa, I always have your back. Why don't you have my back? God never says that. God never says that. God always comes at us in love with a generous spirit, with a, a tender motion, this gentle nudge. Come on, come on, come on. This way, this way, this way. Make this choice. Do this. All through the word of God, we hear and see what Jesus does. And it's never about that. And so I want to just let you know today that this ministry is changing lives. And this partnership that Faith Lutheran has with Oasis absolutely is, 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 is everything. We always hit the bottom of our, of our barrel. And it comes to be about September. And here comes this Faith Lutheran check. This huge Faith Lutheran check. And it comes just at the right time, and then there's more, and then there's one more the next month, and some people give every month. And it's just this feeling that we're not alone, and there's ways to continue to help out, and I just can't thank you enough. Karen Callahan is, has helped us by, by coming and helping build jewelry with the girls, and Dwayne and Dottie have been great. Dwayne serves on the board, and... All of the supplies that you bring, every toothbrush gets used, every, every single thing. Thank you so much for the partnership that we share. There's one more thing that Jesus says, and he says it at the very end today in the gospel. He says, not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. And we know that Jesus is talking about eternal life, that, that we even get to keep our hair, hair in heaven. But Jesus is talking about something else, and, and I, I meet with a group of Catholic women every two weeks so that I can have some support for the ministry, and they pray for me, and they pray for Oasis, and there's this 97-year-old, well, she's not a Lutheran, but she, she claims to be a Lutheran minister, and she wants to be a Lutheran minister. Her name's Reverend Terry, and here's what she said. She went to worship one day at a Catholic church, and, and the priest said this, you don't take anything with you when you die. It's true. You don't get to take anything with you when you die except the love that God gave you and what you did with it. Except for the love that God gave you and what you did with it. 
And I just want to thank you because, really, Oasis is doing amazing things in the lives of children. They are learning to become dependent on God and independent in the world. And they're learning that that faith in God is what gives them the strength to push through every, every circumstance. And they really are getting out of poverty one step at a time. But it's only because that God's strength is in them. And so that's what Oasis does. Teaches them the message. Teach them, teaches who God is. Teaches them to follow Christ. Actually listen to what he said and what he did. And to align themselves with the poor. And that's what we do at Oasis. I'd just like to uh, end, if we could, with a prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, this... Uh... Can you do that? Can you, can you play the guitar while I'm praying? Sometimes my uh, musicians in back of me just start playing. I thought that's what you're doing. <laughs> Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the gift of your Son who came and, and walked and talked uh, on the earth so that we could really pay attention to who you are by watching what he did and what he said because it gives us a clue to how gracious you are. And every time we draw a line between one group of people and the other, Jesus would be stepping into that other group, the one that we're looking at like, well, we're glad we're not over there. And then Jesus has already stepped over to that other group and we think, well, maybe we better get over there. Oh, I'm glad I'm not like those people who are over there and Jesus has stepped over there as well. We give you thanks for your son who broke all the boundaries and went on ahead and did what you asked him to do, which was to die a painful death on the cross. We never really are going to understand that, Lord, this side of heaven. We're never going to understand it, but, but that's what you had him do, and he did it. And so, Lord, we are grateful that now your son lives and reigns and sits with you on, the right -hand side, on your right-hand side, and we're glad that we're able to Feel the living word and the living God that's amongst us today, especially when your word is proclaimed and when your sacraments are partaken of. And Lord, we give you thanks. We ask that you help us to leave here different, realizing that the love inside of us is all from you, and it's really the only thing we get to take with us, that love and what we do with it. Amen. I did it at the early service, not planning it. And this time it's planned, but it'll be different. We have Lisa stand up here. Uh, Lisa, ha Pastor Lisa has a challenging ministry. All ministry is challenging. But <laughs> Pastor Lisa works with young people whose lives are in trouble and tries to bring them the grace of God and stability. And she asked us several times today to pray for Oasis and for people in Oasis. Now we're going to pray for Lisa, Yay. Pastor Lisa. And so I'm going to ask, I know Dwayne and Dottie are here. Dwayne's on the board. And Dottie, they, they, two, both of them have been spokespersons for Oasis here at Faith. I'm going to invite them to come forward if anyone else who wants to. And we're going to lay hands on Lisa in a caring way and pray for her. Come on, come on up. If you can't reach in to touch Lisa, then touch someone standing next to you. Gracious God, we pray that you would pour your power and presence upon Lisa in the ministry to which you have called her. We ask you to give her strength, to give her wisdom, to give her courage. We pray, Lord, that if it is your will that this new property would 
become a home for Oasis and the, the needs to keep it running would be met. Most of all, Lord, we give thanks that people are being touched by your grace through Lisa's ministry. And so we pray, Lord, that you would continue to surround her and guide her. Help her to know that your love for her is unending. And be with the congregations and the people who provide support. Be with every young person who is touched by Oasis so that their lives may be changed and our world may be changed as well. We pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. And if you have not yet supported Oasis financially or with your prayers, please do so. Um, we receive funds throughout the year and pass it on. So if you'd like to support Oasis in a financial way, just make sure you indicate that on your gift. And it reminds me that as we do that, we're fulfilling our cheer. Well, what have we been creating? 